Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Hoagland and I am joined by fellow Hex Hero Chris Van Meter this time around and we are going to be battling some Immortal today. We've each got a deck list that finished 5-2 uh, and two in the 5 Shards Ruby Cup this past weekend and we are gearing up to do some testing for the Hex Primal Immortal Championship this weekend. <clears throat> yeah, this deck's really sweet. Uh, it plays one of the best cards that rotated out of Standard in Howling Brave and a card that was banned in standard during its time that it was legal in uh, Titania's Majesty. So really, where can you go wrong? On my side of the table, I'm playing a Blood Sapphire control deck that's, that's powered by a Dark Heart. And outside of the Oracle songs that my Dreaming Fox is creating and my four copies of Arcane Focus, everything in the deck that I'm playing can play out at instant speed. Quick speed, sorry. <laughs> Which is can be pretty challenging uh, to play against. Fortunately, with this uh, Wild Ruby uh, Titania's Majesty deck, uh, we're just all aggression all the time, mostly just going to be jamming things. And the unique portion of this deck is that it uses Surging Wildfire, along with Grandfather Elk as the champion. So we're not completely all in on a Majesty plan. We can still just go Howling Brave into Runier Hierophant into Surging Wildfire and put a lot of pressure on our opponent. We'll have to try and clean things up with an extinction, and then we can Titania's Majesty into a Rootbother and end the game. Yep, yeah, the, the consistent backup plan of that deck is the thing that definitely makes it super appealing to me. All right, uh, anywho, Chris is going to be on the play for the first game. Go ahead and take us through your opener. Yeah, I'm on the play here, and this opening hand isn't isn't very great. So uh, this is a, would be an unknown opponent, but I can see that he's on Dreaming Fox, which leads me to believe that it's some Sapphire X control deck. And this is not a very, very fast hand, which is something that I'm going to want against these types of control decks. If I were to keep this, I could cycle this Root Father on two uh, and hope to draw something on turn three. But by then, my opponents might uh, be able to actually have something going on. Now, that being said, I do have four shards. I can play this Surgeon Wildfire on four and force my opponent to try and interact. And then Majesty on five if I happen to draw another shard. And because I'm on the play, I think that this hand does have some potential to keep. But to be honest, my deck is very powerful, and I think that an average six is going to be better than this seven. Yep. So we're going to mulligan into a six that is honestly on par with the seven that we had before, since this Crocosaur is likely to be pretty dead against a control deck. But we do have a turn two play, and if we're able to get this Runer Hierophant down uh, under some counter magic with a second uh, Wild Threshold, these decks don't have a lot of ways to interact with it, so we're going to keep this. Uh, on my side of the board, I have a hand that I'm assuming, like, if this hand I have isn't keepable, this deck's not playable. We've got just, like, Crackling Wit, Deny, Hero Fall, and then two of each of our thresholds, so it's a little bit slow on the draw against a lot of wild decks, especially if Chris has, like, a Howling Brave draw or a Chlorophyllia into a turn three Surging Wildfire, but uh, I just, like I said, I'm pretty sure if I'm not allowed to keep this hand, this deck's not playable. And so we'll just start off with the Tap Shard the slow shard and pass the turn back. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and lead on lead on the Necropolis coins here. Um, our deck's pretty resource hungry, so we're going to play out probably all of our coins until we hit, I don't know, seven or eight resources most games. Our first draw wasn't very helpful, but we do get a Might Singer down. If we can hit a Wild Shard for the next turn for this Runer Hierophant, we're in pretty good shape. So now we have kind of like an awkward decision here. I could either play the Sapphire and like hold up Crackling Wit, or I could play this Blood out and then strangle the Might Singer. The downside to leading on the Blood is that then I don't have the option to play a Deny on the third turn of the game. Yeah, I think I probably just want to kill the Might Singer. Like, if Chris has Wild Thresholds in his hand, like, his deck could even do something as obnoxious as, like, Wild Threshold, Chlorophyllia, Howling Brave next turn, have the potential to draw two to three cards off of this. I should probably just be happy to get my one-for-one one out of it. Well, we didn't draw a shard, but we did draw a threat. That's a pretty good one. All right, Righteous Outlaw is going to get in for two, and then we have a decision to make next turn if it gets to ready. So, 
I don't think I'm really too worried about this Righteous Outlaw. One thing that's important to remember about the Scarlet Swordsman is that its one-shot can't trigger if I don't control a troop, so this card's not going to be able to do burst damage for a little while, so it's probably just making Valors. Chris missed a resource drop here as well, so I don't think I want to spend a Hero Fall necessarily on this Outlaw. So I'm just going to go ahead and focus and see what else we find here. Hmm. We've got... We've already got five resources with two more in our hand, so it's probably okay to just go ahead and pick up this Dark Heart here. It'll be able to answer his his threat here eventually. Let me just go ahead and pass the turn back. We're just going to take a Valor. Yep. We did not draw a Wild Shard. We're going to attack first. Yep, we don't have anything we can do about this, so we'll just go ahead and take our two. My plan is to cycle this Root Father uh, to try and find a shard. And I'm not sure if I want to use the Valor on the Outlaw just yet. Um, the more I think about it, the more I would be Valoring anyway, so I should have just did this pre-combat to potentially get into point damage. Yep. And there's no reason to wait on this, because if you have, like, running, running resources here, you want to be able to play them out this turn and next turn. Well, we didn't hit anything, so... Right. Crackling went here, gets us towards our champion power a touch sooner. And, you know, these are, you know, um, our control deck can't punish people when they stumble, but we can definitely capitalize on, like, this game is going to slip away from Chris real fast with him missing resources like this. Yep. I'm just gonna go ahead and hero fall this now. Chris already spent one resource, so he can't uh, can't play a scary three drop on us this turn. So I think that's fine. He have, like worst thing you do is go like shard might singer. There's a shard. I'm not sure how much it's going to do. I think we're just a few turns too late. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and stick our, our quick dark heart here at end step, which uh, this has the gem on it that whenever it deals damage to an opponent, we get to draw a card. So we'll just we'll, we'll bury Chris pretty quickly here. This only makes our our player sacrifice non-socketed cards. So like a Runeer Hierophant or like an Aborian Root Father could get into play and live, but most of the things Chris can play out are going to need to have speed to have any kind of impact. Yep, so there's a fourth resource here, so Chris has a wide variety of options he can play out at this point. So I do have this Surging Wildfire that I could try and get some damage in, but because of the the Dark Heart, there's a chance that Jeff just takes 10 and then yep. doesn't have to use any, any cards or resources to clean it up. So I think that I'm just going to Runeer here and force some type of counter magic and we do have one of our six counters here so we're just going to go ahead and uh, smack that with the deny talk talk to the hand mr alligator all right so we get to smack chris for another four here and draw another card we hit our sixth resource which is great because now we can deploy this second quick dart heart on chris's turn and have this deny up still So at this point, there isn't a whole lot that we can even do. Yeah, Chris could probably realistically stack his deck at this point and still still come out behind. Yep, that's a Carnosaur. And Chris is just, like, playing this out to, like, 
jump the dark heart for a turn. It's a free free block basically. We'll go ahead and uh, play out our quick. Uh... Oh, that's sweet! I didn't realize the quick gem adds the line quick to the the type line. It says artifact quick oh, wow. on there. Digital games that's are great. Cool. <laughs> Get in there. This card is being, so obnoxious. Being, being quick and drawing a card when it deals damage is it, It's just like, like this card was already everything a control deck wanted to be doing, and like now in Immortal we get to add on the fact that it's just like quick to boot. It's just like so insane. So our only chances of winning here is for this Majesty to say he counters it. Then he just doesn't have a counter or a removal spell, and I can Majesty again next turn. So I'm on. Yeah, we've got the third Dark Heart here his, into the Deny for this Majesty. Just. Right, yeah, so that is going to be lethal. That'll wrap it up, and uh, stay tuned for a second pre board game here, folks. All right, welcome back to our second uh, pre reserves game here. Chris is going to be on the play again since he had a little bit of a stumble in that first one, so. Right, so we will be on the play and. This is an interesting hand. It's capable uh, because Heart of Embers is an elf. So our Fell Root Acorn is going to allow us to cast Howling Brave, uh, which will then allow us to class, cast Chlorophyllia the next turn. So this is the kind of hand that uh, is going to play a little awkwardly at first, but still do some cool things. But if I happen to draw a shard in the first couple of turns, it's going to explode. Uh, like most of our hands, our hand uh, feels medium at a glance. It definitely needs a little bit of help. We were missing our second blood threshold, but we have a lot of draws in our deck to get us to that. Arcane focus and uh, plenty of blood thresholds, or resources that just produce those blood thresholds. Yep. Things this deck does not have. Cheap shot. That is not a blood threshold that we're looking for, but it is a card that's uh, powerful in this matchup. So a shard there would have been great since we could have cast both our Chlorophilia, which would have led to a Majesty on turn three. But for now, we're just going to play a Chlorophilia. Pass the turn. Hey, we hit our second blood threshold there like a professional since we were on the draw. Go ahead and play that out. So Chris missed his resource. So I think it's smart to just go ahead and strangle this Howling Brave here. This deck does play 22 resources, so I think that while what's happening in these two games is a realistic possibility, um, I don't think it's going to happen as often. I mean, like, on top of your 22 resources, right, you got, like, four Braves and four Chlorophyllias, too, so, like, you've got 30, like, 30 cards that produce resources in your deck. Let's go ahead and play out a Sapphire here and pass the turn. So one thing I was thinking about when I was looking at this deck list was the resources on your duels are 3-3-4, three, three, right? With 4 being the Well of Savagery? Yeah. I wonder if you need to, if you could adjust the elf count a little bit to, like, get to that fourth acorn. Or if you could just, like, risk it and run it as is. Uh, well, so there are eight elves. And I cycled that uh, Root Father in my main phase just on the off chance I hit one of the three braves left and we got lucky and did yep okay so here we have to decide what we want to do we can play everything in our hand and we can majesty uh, but we may be weak to a hero fall notably However, i do not have deny up so yeah, he do, does not have the ability to use Deny or Counter Magic. Um, if I'm Majesty into something like a Runer Hierophant, that could be good for us. Um, also, with this particular hand, I don't think that I'm that sad if he happens to use a Hero Fall on what I'm Majesty, because I have double Wildfire in my hand. I just don't want to play one into a Hero Fall and get too, and get too full on. So I think that we're just going to go for a Majesty. That is going to resolve here, obviously. 
speed. So what Ma Titanium Majesty does for those that are newer to the game or have only really played standard, this flips over the top five cards of Chris's deck and he gets to pick a troop among them and create a replica of that troop and put it into play, or a copy, sorry, and then it gains the double damage text of this Majesty. So I can hit this Root Father and you know, had he had he not have resources available, I could pump it and do 18 points of damage, or more than that, 38 points of damage, because the Root Father is gemmed with um, Empowerment. We really don't have a way to play around Hero Fall here, so I think I'm going to take the Root Father and use his ability on my um, Howling Brave, and then use my Champion Power. Uh, actually, I'll save the Champion Power for a, for a Surging Wildfire, but at the very least, this is going to let me get in 9 points of damage this turn. Oh, geez. Empowerment on that is gross. I didn't realize that was how that was gemmed. That's really smart. Should have should have looked looked better when I zoomed. Not that I could do anything about this, but... So this has speed, and when it comes into play, it gives one of Chris's other troops plus power. So this is attacking for... Basically, this hits for 24 the turn it comes in off of Majesty here. Uh, Chris, your audio cut out there for... Sorry about that. Uh, it's, it's not likely that I'm going to get another turn from here on out to be able to use this champion power and have it be effective. So it might be worthwhile for me to just do it on the Howling Brave here and get him for 12. Yep. Yeah, because, like, I guaranteed, like, if I have the Hero Fall, I need to kill this with Boring Fox, you might as well, like, use your champion power to get your plus three in. So, 10 out of 10, just going to go ahead and kill the Saborian Root Father here, take the rest of them out of the deck. And you'll note here that there were four Root Fathers left in Chris's deck because the Titanius Majesty created a replica of that. Or a copy, sorry, replicas are artifacts. Copies and replicas are different. Devil is in the details. So, this, this turn here is an important thing to denote that just because your cards are quick doesn't mean you have to play them as quick cards. Darkheart says at the beginning of Chris's turn, he's going to have to sacrifice the non-socketed card. So we're just going to play this out now to make him sacrifice this Howling Brave. We're kind of hoping for no second majesty here. the cleanup in our hand for almost anything else except for a majesty that's lethal and with the aborian root fathers out of chris's deck the majesties aren't as scary anymore wow um so i like don't really have a way to get through that dark heart at all <laughs> yeah this is one of the more annoying cards pre-board right if you don't have a root father or rabbit out yeah so like none of these can like actually attack through it very well might be worth just to play the Heart of Embers to have a Valor in hand so that I can, like, my next Wildfire will be big enough to attack through a Dark Heart. Well, at least attack into a Dark Heart. I don't think that just waiting is the right call, so... Yep, I mean, especially because, like, this Dark Heart generates card advantage, right? Like, yeah. in this way, this way you get to block with the Heart of Embers next turn, so it's going to sack anyway, so... And by that, I mean I should just pass the turn and not attack with this. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just passing the turn here. Ship it back on over to Chris. Our Heart of Embers goes away. So I can wildfire and attack, get in for two. Yeah, so like, I, I feel like the only way I'm winning this game is to like wildfire. Burn me out basically. And try and burn you out. 
And I have the hero fall here, but with Chris not playing the Valor out, I think I'm pretty happy to just go ahead and block this. On, like, the off chance he has a follow-up, like a Carnosaur, I could just hero fall the Carnosaur. Getting to play our second Dark Hurt here at end step. Just untap and draw our three cards now. That feels gross. Yeah, this matchup feels abysmal. I might need to take a shower after that turn. Ugh. Although, to be fair, I think that if there's ever a game where an opponent goes Howling Brave into Underhierophant... Oh, just, just dead, especially like... Shot. Like, I, I, had, I had my Extinction in, like, my top nine cards this game, so, like, I kind of have a chance, but... That, that needs to happen, especially pre-board where, like, I only have two extinctions in the deck. I'm definitely a dog to a fast rabbit. Yep, that's fine. We would rather save our deny for, um, a majesty. Let's go ahead and hero fall this. Yeah, so, like, the only hope for winning this is for him to not have a removal spell, and I can do exactly 11 points of damage. It would be 12 points of damage. Yep. All, All right. right. Well, let's go ahead and get We're to dead. the, uh, post-reserves games here. Thanks for hanging out, folks. Hello, everybody. We're doing our reserve swapping for the Wild Ruby Titania's Majesty deck. Uh, we're playing against a Blood Sapphire hard control deck. So the first thing that I want to do here is cut cards like Crocosaur and Carnosaurus as they're really not going to be fighting anything. And they're just going to be, you know, troops that are not costed, not cost very well for their, uh, for their size based off of what we're wanting to do. So once we cut the uh, Crocs and the Carns, the other thing that I want to do is I want to shave a Root Father. Um, it's fairly expensive, but I also want to have uh, some threat diversity because this control deck is going to be running a lot of copies of Hero Fall. So we're going to shave a Root Father there. And I also want to shave one of my Heart of Ember. Another reason that we want to uh, try and give us some diversity with our threats. Cards that I want to bring in, so I like Nature Reigns and Pyre Strike as answers to uh, Dark Heart of Nolzan. And I also like the two Repost. Now what that's going to do is it'll let us play a little bit of a waiting game uh, with our threats, but it is also going to give us protection against Extinction, which really is going to be the only out that Jeff will have to an early Runier Hierophant. So if we happen to have turn one Howling Brave into turn two Runier Hierophant, Hitting an extinction with repost is almost assuredly going to close the game up on that following turn when we get some reprieve. But it's also going to allow us to wait until like turn five um, or until we have five resources, regardless of what turn it is, to play Runer Hierophant and have an answer to a counter magic or a deny with Reginald's repost. Uh, I feel like the matchup is still fairly close. Um, with a little bit of the edge uh, coming on my side because of the explosiveness that I have, but there's a lot of variance involved. So if I happen to draw the wrong half of my deck, uh, get shard screwed or shard flooded, then Jeff's going to be able to use that advantage um, on his side because his deck is just much more consistent at doing what it does. Drawing cards, uh, countering, countering cards, and killing everything I play. Hello everyone, welcome to the reserving segment for the Blood Sapphire control deck while we're playing against the uh, Ruby Wild Titania's Majesty deck. Um, our goal post-board in this matchup is to kind of uh, become a little bit more active and take out some of our more clunky cards. Um, we're going to trim a Crackling Wit, an Epiphany, and a Something Bard, and we're going to bring in our two additional copies of Extinction. This is one of our best tools against, you know, the Spell Shield... Uh, Runeer Hierophant. It also does a good job of cleaning up any uh, rhinos that that Runeer Hierophant has made during its time on the battlefield. And we're to bring in this extra copy of Transmog here. Not only is this card a good, clean, cost-efficient answer to um, Chris's hero power activation, since we can just spend one resource to revert the troop and uh, downgrade it that he's targeted, such as the Surging Wildfire, but this card can also uh, effectively answer a walking calamity that Chris will have post reserves. We can turn it into a nine drop, which is still a potent threat, but nine drops don't deal 10 to us when we hero fall them. So we can like transmog a walking calamity and then hero fall it or transmog a walking calamity and then extinction it or dark heart it the following turn or something along those lines. Um, I think this matchup is uh, fairly close on average with. Um, 
probably Chris's deck having the slight edge just because it's occasionally going to generate free wins off of faster inner higher fence, especially when he's on the play. But our deck's also a touch more consistent than his, so he's going to have games where he uh, draws a little bit too few resources or draws too many resources in his deck that has uh, 30 resources effectively in it, and we'll be able to leverage the advantage in those games like you saw in those first two uh, pre-board games. Uh, at any rate, stay tuned for some post-reserve matches here, folks. All right, welcome back to our first post reserves game here. Chris is going to be on the play for this one. Go ahead and take us through your opener, Chris. Yeah, so uh, we don't have Howling Brave, but we do have three shards and some playable cards, including some ramp, uh, along with uh, a repost that we might be able to snag something sweet. So I think we just keep this. Uh, on my side of the board, my hand's like kind of slow. I've got a Crackling Wit on two, but my first piece of meaningful interaction is this Counter Magic on three. Like, this is one of those hands like Chris was talking about in the last game where, like, if he's just got a fast Hauling Brave start, I'm probably fairly dead, but, like, I'm on the draw and Crackling Wit gets the cycle, so, like, hopefully I can find an Extinction or a Hero Fall or something in my first three draws to keep us in an interactive game of Chris's start. No Hauling Brave. Fist Pump. I'm going to lead on the Blood Shard here on one, just in case we rip a Strangle next turn so we can play it. So we're going to play our Ruby Shard here. I'm going to... So I can I can lead on Might Singer, and then I have Wild Shard, Double Chlorophyllia next turn for a bunch, <laughs> for a, for a bunch of triggers. Or I can just Chlorophyllia um, and try to hit with this Surging Wildfire. But I think I'd rather just see what I can do with this Might Singer. Yeah, like, trying to draw a few more cards to fetch, but I feel like getting, like, you're almost... Unless I have Strangle, you're, like, getting a free, like, 10-pointer off the off the Surging Wildfire. But, like, the first 10 isn't nearly as important as, like, the back 10, right? It's like you don't need yeah. to be in a hurry to get it. Especially since Dreaming Fox starts at 25 for now. Cute. Yep, it's a really big deal. So what I actually can do here is I can Feral Root Acorn for my second Ruby Shard, and then just use one Chlorophyllia here, um, and keep up Repost to try so and protect from a Hero Fall. Seems good. Well, the problem is, is, like, it only does it for a turn. Yep. Repost is kind of a tough card to cut in this matchup, right? You want to grab, like, Oracle Songs or Epiphanies with it, probably, not, like, my interaction. Yeah. At the very least, like, keeping the Might Singer alive for a turn, I think, is worth it. Yep. Also, like, you're incentivized to use that Acorn to get the second Ruby now, and in case your your only Elf dies, right? Yeah. Yep. Take our two from this, uh, this soon-to-be-very-scary Grizzly Bear. So every time Chris gains a Wild Threshold... The top card of his deck as a troop will get to draw it. We'll Crackling Wit here at end step. Draw another card for our turn. Uh, still haven't found a piece of removal, but we can hold up our uh, our interrupts here, at least. Pass on back to Chris. The Might Singer doesn't get scary until Chris is closer to 5, 5 Wild Threshold, so we can just keep taking our 2 for now. Another shot for Chris. Man, Might Singer is wow. not cooperating. Ugh. So I could potentially, I could play one of the Force here. But if I wait a turn, then I can play around a Counter Magic. Yeah, 
take her two again. Don't have anything we can do here. Chris is just like, this is something you want to do against control decks a lot of the time. Like, Chris has pressure on the table, so like he's not incentivized to like play into me leaving up my open resources. At some point, I'm probably going to have to spend them to do something, and then he can slip something through. So yeah, 10 out of 10, going to go ahead and burn a counter magic here on the Surging Wildfire. Not only do we not have a resource to trigger this deny, but our troop to trigger does not deny this turn, but uh, I would like to make the rest of a Surging Wildfire's cost two more here. So we're going to repost the counter magic. So this takes the counter magic and puts it back into Chris's hand, basically just delays it for a turn and lets the Surging Wildfire push through. So we're down to one resource here now, so... This is Chris's best opportunity to push this through. If we had transmog, we could get him a little bit here, but we don't, so we're just going to take 12 here. Ow. Alright, and then... I mean, at this point, we just have to, like, play this extinction and, like, hope Chris doesn't have a Magister or another speed threat next turn to kill us. We're still, he's still... He could reasonably go Shard Root Father and, like, really beat us down next turn. Yep, that's Might Singer. Yep. Extinction. That's not another extinction. Well, I think I'm pretty obligated to just like play the star card out here. Doesn't feel stellar. The way this interacts with deny is not great, right? Like this has to be in play, and like so I can't mm -hmm. like play it on your turn to get the trigger still. So I'm going to uh, get rid of. Alrighty. Alright, well, this is actually a very good draw. A second Heart of Embers is going to let us uh, play the Heart, get a Valor, use the Valor to six his Dark Heart, and then kill him if he has nothing. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're just dead, right? Because you get to six me, too. So the six is this, and then you six me, and then attack me for lethal. So, yep, we are D-E-D yeah. -E -D dead. Okay. Um... Right, on to the next postboard game here, where we'll finally get to be on the play. Alright, welcome to our second post reserves game here, and I get to be on the play this time around. Um, this hand feels like medium minus at best. Um, I guess I have focus on two and to deny up on three with these slow shards. Yeah, this is, this is probably fine. Uh, so, I think this hand is just real bad. Like, it's super reactive with, like, both Nature Reigns and Repost. We don't have any Ruby. Uh, and we're on the draw, so we're just going to go ahead and move again. And this is one of the... This is the opportunity cost for playing this deck. Sometimes you just draw your Walking Calamity. <laughs> well, it's possible, now that I'm on the draw, having, like, diversifying my Majesty Threats isn't worthwhile. And rather just have more force to jam. Um, I, I mean, I think the five has to be better than this. This is basically a five card hand as is. All right, sure, why not? All right, I'm gonna lead on my uh, shard of cunning here for. Uh, actually, I'm gonna lead on the necropolis coin. It lets me make a decision with the sh shard of cunning later. Go ahead here and play the Shard of Cunning for Sapphire, and then go ahead get our focus on looking for either like a transmog or another resource here potentially. We get both of those things. Uh, I think I'd rather hedge and take the transmog since there's way more resources than transmogs in our deck. Um, also, that resource was not a second blood threshold. It'd be a closer pick, but definitely don't need another Sapphire at this point. I should have used this Frail Red Acorn for wild on my first turn which is why i was hovering over it and thinking for a while my gut told me it was correct but i couldn't rationalize it and the reason being is uh so that when i play my singer here on two um i want to be able to get a trigger if it doesn't die um and now i can't do that reason being is if i play a ruby shard and play might singer and then he kills my might singer i don't have an elf to guarantee a second wild 
threshold for Runier Hierophant, so I can't risk it. Long story short, I'm going to miss a trigger on my Lightsinger. Yeah, it's if fine. It, if it, it lives. It wasn't going to draw a card anyways, right? The last That's true. I'm just like <laughs> 0 for 7 already in this match. <laughs> Uh, sweet. Okay, so we hit uh, we hit our second blood source. That being said, we want to go ahead and play out the Sapphire Shard so we can have our Denies and Counter Magics of the world up. We're not going to transmog this aggressively here because we would much rather like transmog a Chris's end step should he not give us something we want to deny. So I'm just going to attack with my singer. I will take the punch from the grizzliest of bears. And I'd rather have this get countered than... And I basically just want to be resource efficient this turn. I don't want to, like, only spend one here when I can spend three, so we're 10 out of 10 just going to jam that. And play this Necropolis coin out here, and then uh, pass the turn back. We're just going to attack. And the bear beatdown continues. So I can play this Runier Hierophant um, and have it get countered. And then on Jeff's turn, he can just jam a Dark Heart, and I'm not in a very good spot. Although I would be able to resolve a Runier Hierophant if that's the case. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Yeah. 10 out of 10, snap denying that. Good thing it's not counter magic. Holy. You're right. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, you know, we don't have a resource drop, but I think I'd rather hold my quick interaction up rather than jam this epiphany on my turn to try and hit the resource drop. So, drawing, drawing this changes our play. We're just going to attack. Yep. And we can actually sit on this for a turn. I'm just going to go ahead and Epiphany here. No reason, no reason not to. So if I repost this now, does it go back to you immediately? How does repost read? Uh, at the at the end of your turn, if this is in your hand, revert it and put yes. this into Yes, so as, as your turn ends, it would come back to my hand, so it would just go back to me. Well, the so at, at the end of your turn stuff triggers when you go into the end step. Like like dreadlings die, and then you still get a chance to do stuff. I think dreadlings are worded differently. Let me look it up. Let's check. Yeah, that's that's very relevant. Oh no, yeah, huh? You're right. At the end of your turn, oh, we're, we're gonna find out. Yeah, I think I think you're right. If this works like Dreadlings work, you should keep that until your next turn. Yeah. Hey. Uh, yep. Yeah, we're like, just gonna. In magic terms, it's the beginning of the next end step. The beginning of your next end step, because you did you didn't get it back yeah. to me on my turn, obviously. Yep. Should I take another hit here from the bear. And then, so now Chris needs an epiphany. Otherwise, this will revert and come back to my turn here. Uh, huh. This is kind of a tough call, right? Do I want him to be able to draw two cards? I don't know. I feel like the density of cards I care about in Chris's deck is low enough that I just let this resolve and save my interrupt for an actual threat. And then he can draw up there. Oh, we finally drew a card. You know, I might have missed sequence there. I have this hero fall, so it's very possible that I should have done this in response to the epiphany in the event that Chris drew a resource like that. But, like, another part of me wanted to, like, give him a chance to draw a Might Singer to get it out of his hand, so I'm not sure what the correct percentage play is there. Let's go ahead and pass the turn here. Still stumbling and fumbling a little bit. Get lo losing our epiphany kind of hurt. I'm gonna try this now. I'm gonna go ahead and counter magic this though if he has a second one it costs five. Oh you're so it's the worst. <laughs> so counter magic makes all the other cards with the same name as that, so any any of the runiers Chris has are gonna cost him five for the rest of the game. 
Hallelujah. Hit that. Sounds great. Go ahead and pass the turn back to Chris here. Almost cast a Calamity when you draw it. So he's in a Borean Root Father range now with seven. I'm just going to go, go, go ahead and Crackling Wit here at his end step. Draw a card, gain a charge. I guess that card's really good at enabling Psychic Ascension, doesn't it? Just like cycles and gives you a charge. Yeah. Hit this, and now six resources. It's also nice because, like, turn six is when, like, you can Oracle Song while still holding the Nine Counter Magic up, so that, that sequence as well. Yeah. Huh. This doesn't have speed, right? Nope, Star Shield and Dominance. Yeah, I think I want to just extinction this. It might be a little bit ambitious because we didn't already have a shard in our hand, but we were fortunate enough to hit one here, so we can extinction plus all the three cost interaction this turn. Deny can tag something like a Titanius Majesty that we wouldn't be able to beat with an extinction. Or an Aborian Root Father, for instance. Yep. What brave. about a Howling Brave? Howling Brave, technically deniable. Technically. Un un he's undeniable, maybe? Would that be? Hmm. Yep, yeah, pass it back. What about a Chlorophyllia? <laughs> yep. None of those are alligator scary, so I'm not allowed to deny them. It's a requirement. Um, I think I'm actually just going to strangle this because I want to tick down the Psychic Ascension that's in my hand. And let's Epiphany to try and hit a resource drop here. We did. Sweet. Pass back. Another Howling Brave. He is snarling over there. The Coyotes. It, it's kind of thematic strangling a Howling Brave too, right? Yeah. Like the, the sound effect is on point. You just wait. I, I can chip power it twice. <laughs> Alright, so our Psychic Ascension here says that whenever we um, play an action, we generate a random troop with the same cost and thresholds as that action, and our champ power now gives us a random action, which gave us a real stinker here for our first one. Oh, jeez. This is... <laughs> yeah! This is the big mama, isn't it? That's it is. that's a walking clan base. This is, cannot be, be interrupted, so you can target it with interrupts, but they don't do anything. Speed and crush and death cry deals 10 damage to your opponent in each of their troops. Thankfully, we're going to give Chris a random 9-drop here. Also, also kind of scary. Um, huh. Well, I guess I guess we'll just hero fall that and get it out of the way. This goes back to Chris's hand on Death Cry. But we can interrupt that one, which is worthwhile. Go ahead and hit my champion power, generate a random action here. That dude, target troop gets plus three. Oh, okay, sweet. Kill your Howling Brave, draw a card. Wow. I'll put this here, Glyph of Hatred on my Warlock, which there aren't any zero cost blood troops, so it just doesn't do anything. And I was hoping that Calamity was actually going to do something. Yeah, right? 
Majesty. Is there a card Majesty gets that Transmogrifade and Hero Fall don't deal with? I don't think so. I guess it gets Runier Hierophant? Alright, yeah, it gets Runier Hierophant. Ophelia, sure. What does this do? Inspire gives flight. Okay, sure. Champ power, give us a random action. Crackling torment, that's a playable one. To grab that Wrathwood Colossus out of Chris's hand. I'd assume, unless there's another walking calamity. Sacrifice some idiots here. Guy okay, takes four. Go ahead and take the Wrathwood Colossus out of Chris's hand. Play the slow shard out since we don't need the resources turn anyways. Crack Chris for seven, nine. Dead goes into hiding. Ain't in for four, six, seven this turn. Hit our champ power, see if we can get anything spicy. That is not particularly useful. Pass back to Chris. I think we've got this game wrapped up at this point. It's a clam bake. We have another transmog here. What does that do? <laughs> what? <laughs> Real, oh my gosh. I'm going to get back to Colossus in game nine. Holy crap. What a... <laughs> <laughs> I could have just took the damage. Yeah, I could have just took the damage, couldn't I? <laughs> that's that's something that can happen when you transmog walking calamity in this format. Okay. Oh yeah. The more you know, yeah. knowledge is power. All right. Yep. All right. Well, let's. Uh... Okay, so kill you. I think you might still be dead. Let's see what our let's see what our troops get here. Play this out, get a six drop. And then so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so this hero fall means that I have lethal still. What? <laughs> it's a very real thing you can get out of that, I suppose. How did, like, all of your troops have. Oh, from the. Phoenix. From the Phoenix Guard Lancer, yeah. I didn't get a spider to drain me for one. You're right. This is lethal anyways, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, sweet. And we'll be back for the uh, fifth and final game that is post reserves here in just a moment. Thanks for hanging out, folks. All right, welcome back to the fifth and final game of this set. Chris is going to be on the play once again. So go ahead and take us through. Well, we have a great hand finally we're going to keep it. Uh, my hand is kind of medium minus, but we're on the draw, and we have an arcane focus, and we can produce sapphire threshold, so snap her off. It's like never in a million years I don't think it's ever right to transmog the Howling Brave here, so let's just focus and dig. Dig, dig, dig. Um... This counter magic's probably a little bit too slow at this point, and we do need a second blood threshold, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those necropolis coins here. Yeah. 
We finally did it. That. So this has spell shield, and whenever it deals damage to me, Chris gets a 3 3 rhino with crush. Uh, yeah, well, let's focus and try and focus into an extinction here. Those cards are not extinction. Uh, I'll grab that, and um, I think we're actually going to not play the coin out because we probably need to cycle that coin next turn to dig for extinction ASAP. Alright, so the interesting part here is like we want to try and either find a repost or something like wildfire or majesty to play post extinction or repost to stop the extinction but i drew this jags so i could play jags <laughs> that pump, inspires the it'll, rhinos it'll pump my <laughs> it'll pump my runer hyphen and then give my rhinos double damage so at the very least i'll be able to try and pressure him until that point so let's just do it yeah and i'm pretty sure i'm obligated to transmog the jags here I can't, like, if he gets a double damage Rhino, he's going to be able to champ power it and, like, hit me for 12 with it next turn. What does that do? When you gain um, health right, at a so counter... Okay, so you're not gaining health, so actually just removal spell, the best kind of transmog. There's a Rhino. So we've got uh, two looks at uh, Psychic Ascension. Good, that's exactly where we want that card. Um... I, I played out the Sapphire, I could have, like, held a Pure Fall or Deny here, but realistically, we're just cycling this Necropolis coin, because if we don't hit a, an Extinction here in our next two draws, we're just going to die. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I think that the best bet here is just to champion power my hierophant to push as much damage as i possibly can it gives like wildfire speed follow-ups post extinction the best chance to finish me off yeah so like i could save the champion power for a wildfire or support a majesty but like i don't have either so i want to try and push as much damage as i can yep i mean and this hit's going to put me to 210 which leaves me dead on board Yep, it's another Rhino. And this game's just like a great example of like why playing a deck like what Chris is playing is a good idea. The deck I'm playing will never, ever get a free win ever. Like even the games where Chris stumbled, I still had to like work and put a game together. Like this game, I just, you know, didn't have Extinction in my top 14 cards here. So we are D-E-D -E -D dead. Um, is it the 15th card? Nope, wasn't the 15th card either. All right, well, at any rate... Uh, we are dead, so that's going to finish the set off at uh, 3 and 2, and uh, stay tuned for a wrap-up segment here. Thanks for hanging out, folks. All right, welcome to the wrap-up segment for today's uh, Hero Battles video, and um, those matches, those games kind of felt like they played out like about what I was expecting them to. The games where you had kind of slower starts, I was able to capitalize and punish you, and the games where you had more aggressive draws, I just kind of rolled over and died. Yeah, it, it feels like... It, it feels like this this majesty list isn't tuned enough yet so what that means is like the the deck itself uh is extremely powerful and is going to kill his opponents on turn three you're going to effectively kill opponents on turn two sometimes just by playing a, a runer hierophant um, if, and they don't have a way to interact with it so like that portion of the deck is going to happen sometimes sure uh but having it tuned to be able to play games when you're not really playing games is where uh, the next level portion of it's going to come in. And I, I feel like as the format starts to evolve and the lists start to get tuned, like this type of Majesty deck is going to end up being one of the top decks in Immortal, and we're going to have to figure out a way to combat it effectively. Uh, on my side of the table, the Blood Sapphire Control deck, it... It kind of played how I was expecting to play when I was looking at this deck list on paper or, you know, on my computer screen, so to speak. Um, I was like, 
I feel like this is going to have a hard time with the decks to try to get under you. We only have access to three Transmogrifades and two Strangles as cheap interaction, and, like, we have Extinctions to clean up, but, like, four Extinctions are not always going to be in the top 15 cards of your deck, so you can't always, like, lean on that type of effect, and anytime they're able to get under your Denies and your Counter Magics, your opponent's often going to be able to uh, run away with the game, so I felt like I wanted something out of the reserves, like, definitely the fourth Transmogrifade, possibly something like Exarch of the Egg is another good answer to, like, Spell Shield Runer, Hierophants, and the fast Faster decks like Urknock in the format. Um, Dreaming Fox has 25 starting life, but that only goes so far if you're not interacting with your opponent as you go up the curve. Yeah, so my question for like a hard true control deck like that in the format is like what are you expecting to prey on? With that particular build, you seem to be a little weak to the super aggressive decks that are, that are going to go under you. And yeah. even though you do have like the car some card draw and uh, the dark hearts are set up pretty well. So, like, how so, are you, like, how's the deck going to fare against, like, a super grindy Kagu deck? Yeah, so, like, I think this deck is really able to leverage those matchups especially, and the results of the Ruby Cup kind of surprised me because, like, the there was a five-shard Lixel deck that ultimately ended up winning it, and there was, like, a Horrors of War deck did well, and all these other, like, grindy Hero Fall decks were, like, the decks that ended up finishing towards the top of the ladder. So, like, if a deck like this hits good matchups early on or, like, runs a little bit hot in the matchups that are harder and you, like, end up getting paired into, like, this mid-range grind fest, like the deck full of dark hearts that draw cards and like the psychic ascensions and the epiphanies and the oracle song is probably going to be good at grinding with the best of them that makes sense all right at any rate i hope everyone is ready for the hex primal immortal championship that's going to be taking place this weekend the first one of those on uh saturday uh chris and i will be battling in there for sure and hopefully we'll see everyone around uh thanks for watching um also remember if you enjoyed the content to like it on youtube and share it on your social media you can also support my content in a few different ways such as um subscribing on twitch for 4.99 a month or becoming a patron on patreon for varying amounts there's information on how to do all that below the stream you can also support my content by supporting my sponsor who is hexprimal.com you can use code Jeff5 on their website when you check out to save uh, 5% on your order. And we'll be back uh, later with some more hero battles.